Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel here at Mayfield Restorations. Uh, firstly, I'd just like to apologise for the delay uh, in this video coming out. I've just celebrated a significant birthday and I had a well-earned break uh, up in the Lake District, uh, courtesy of my very kind wife. Uh, anyway, so that's why there's been a delay, but this video is um, slightly different in that I don't generally do garden furniture, but these are two cast iron and wood garden chairs uh, and a customer has asked me to fully restore these for his mother. Um, as you can see they're in quite a terrible condition but just keep watching and you won't believe the transformation. I also wanted to say a, a huge thanks to everyone that supported my channel uh, so far. I can't believe the comments and the number of subscribers I'm getting. It's, uh, it's really humbling and I'm really appreciative. Thank you. Hi, I'm David, and I restore, restyle, and refinish old and loved furniture. I use a variety of methods and techniques to bring this forgotten furniture back to life. Welcome to my channel. I'm just showing off one of my birthday gifts here. This is a Barco scraper. I've had carbide scrapers in the past uh, that haven't been very good, so this is my first time using this. Uh, and purely all I'm doing here is trying to get rid of some of that finish just to see what the wood's like underneath. Uh, and as you can see, it's not great. The first thing I need to do is remove these rusted old bolts uh, and nuts. So initially what I needed to do is soak them in a bit of WD-40. Hopefully that would just release the bolts. Um, but as you'll see in a moment, that didn't work. Um, so yeah, worth a try though. The, the state of these ducts and bolts, they were just too far gone. They were, they were totally rusted up and they were just breaking and, and spinning. So as you'll see in a second, I resorted to getting the power tools out. So here I am trying to cut the nuts off the back of the bolt uh, so I can simply then just pop the bolt through the hole in the slats and the metal work. Um, this is a great piece of kit for things like this, uh, a little Dremel uh, with a cutting wheel. They do wear down quite quickly and if you buy the Dremel Zone ones they do tend to be a bit more expensive but I have tried the cheaper ones and they are not as good uh, as the Dremel Zone. So yeah, this worked a treat. Took a little bit more time, but uh, definitely worked. <music> D 
this was the point I decided that the best route to go down was to replace the woodwork rather than try and restore it. It was just too far gone, there was too much rot and it was, it was pointless even trying to restore it. The customer asked me uh, if I could sort of revive the initial manufacturer's plaque that was on the chairs. That it, was, it had been covered up with years of paint. Uh, it was all tarnished, so yeah, no problem. The little brass plaques, and this is me attempting to bring them back to life. This little brush attachment for your drill is great for things like this. This is actually, it's not just a wire brush, this is actually a brass bristle brush. Um, it's a little less aggressive and it's great for things like this. This is another little drill attachment. This time it is a wire brush, it's not brass. Um, more aggressive, but great for using on metalwork. Uh, I just wanted to remove any surface rust, any loose paint, um, and any sort of um, grime, if you will. It's gonna get cleaned after this anyway, but this is, this is part of the prep to, uh, to lay the paint down. This is just a rust treatment from Rustins. The metalwork wasn't too bad, so probably didn't need this, but there was no harm in, in giving it a bit of a treatment before paint. One of the chairs needed some metalwork repair. Um, now I am not a welder, uh, I wouldn't have a clue how to weld cast iron, so I did the best I could with this quick weld from JB Weld. I've used this before and it's really, really strong. I use this in conjunction with a little steel plate. Now, this absolutely worked a treat, and as you can see there with the bolt, this needed to be adjustable. This slat was actually adjustable because it holds the back iron piece in place. So, had a go with this, um, left it overnight, and as you'll see in a second, it worked a treat. All the preparation on the metalwork's been done now with the, the wire brush and it's just a case of giving it all a thorough wipe over 
with some white spirit to get rid of any grease or oils or the WD-40. Um, I believe it's called mineral spirits in the, in the States. So same thing and it will then be ready for paint. This is a rust inhibitor primer. Uh, I think I've said that right. I think it was refer used to be referred to as red oxide. Um, I, I don't believe it is that now, but this is just a primer used for metal to try and reduce the risk of any future rust. Once a primer's dry, uh, and that primer actually takes no time at all to dry, it's about 20 minutes, it's uh, time for the black satin enamel paint. This particular paint I use, I've used before on Singer sewing machine and different sewing machine restorations actually, where they have a lot of uh, cast iron on those. It lays down really nice, it's really hard wearing, and I would definitely uh, I'd definitely recommend it to anyone uh, hopefully you'll agree when you see the finished product at the end of the video Fortunately, one of the wooden slats, the shaped wooden slats that are at the top of these chairs um, was in, re well, I was going to say reasonable condition. It's not in reasonable condition. It was just in one piece uh, and I could use that as a, a template. Um, sorry, here you can see I'm using my another birthday present, my new Japanese pull saw. Uh, this is the first time I'm using it and it's absolutely brilliant. It's, uh, it's like a hot knife through butter. So anyway. Back to the uh, the making of the top slat. So use the, the original piece, uh, make a template, and then it's just time to cut it out. I'm using my bandsaw to cut out the shape, um, but if you haven't got one of these, you can just use a handheld jigsaw. I'd just like to apologise to all the Daisy fans out there. Uh, unfortunately, she wasn't available for filming uh, while I was doing this latest restoration. Uh, she was too busy laying a bed inside the house. The new wood I purchased to replace the old and to make the new slats with uh, was slightly wider. It was five mil wider than the original slats. Now that doesn't sound like a lot, um, but when you actually factor that in with the spacings on the slats on the bench um, they did need to be right and I ripped them all down to the right size with my uh, cheap and cheerful table saw. The first slat on the chair has a, a rounded edge on it. This is because this is where you, the back of your knees would go against when you sat on the chair. So 
it just needs to be rounded off. Uh, all I'm doing here is trying to replicate that using the old board. Um, that line there is where I'm going to be using it as a guide for sanding. There's probably a better way to do this, but this was fine for me. Um, it, it, it's a hand finished product, so you know, this is how I do it. The shape slat that I cut earlier um, also needed shaping. The top of it is rounded off um, for aesthetic reasons, I guess. Um, and the under of it is slightly beveled um, to sit against the wrought iron backing, um, which you'll see shortly. So that's all I'm doing here. I'm doing a similar principle to what I did with the first slat. I'm making a bevel and a rounded edge using my sander. Like I say, there's probably a better way, but this is how I do it. Once the slats were all made and sanded and shaped and ready to go, they needed a hole to uh, accept the bolts to fix them to the metalwork. So that's all I'm doing here, measuring the bolt, determining which drill bit to use, uh, measuring the bolt head because I want to countersink the, the bolt head into the slats uh, and that's what I'm doing there. Just slightly rebate that into the wood and the bolt should sit in there nicely. I've been asked to mention uh, what stains I use and this is a light walnut stain um, from a company called Morels and this is an alcohol based stain. I'm using a specific exterior varnish uh, for the top coat of this um, this wood for obvious reasons they're garden chairs they're going to be outside and in the UK they are pretty likely to get a lot of rain on them so yeah this is just an exterior it's actually a water-based one but it's in, it's used for exterior uh, exterior protection <laughs> I noticed when I put the slats in that one of the slats wasn't sitting parallel to the rest of them. When I checked, the hole was actually uh, set further back than the rest of them. So I needed to um, sort of grind that out a little bit so that the slat would sit parallel. So that's all I'm doing here. It's a diamond bitted uh, grinder, I'm making the hole a little bit bigger. And once, um, once that's done, I just cover it up with a bit more paint and it sits nice and parallel. Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching my video and supporting my channel and hope you like the end result.
I really hope you enjoyed watching this video and the work that I've produced. I definitely plan on adding more videos, so if you like what I do, please show your support by hitting subscribe, give me a thumbs up, and click the notification bell. Thanks for watching.